Well, good morning. Still having some technical difficulties. I don't know what's going on with this program, but uh, it's one of those things you turn it off and turn it back on again and voila, it works. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> the other day, it said I had an excellent connection and uh, and I didn't. <laughs> Just a little thing there spinning around, driving me crazy. Uh, you live by the tech and you die by the tech. But uh, so what's going on today? So we're going to talk about how you can get your own data and take a look so that you can understand what's going on in the real estate market so that you don't have to rely and depend on other people. I'm going to give you a couple tips and tricks. But today we have 7,600 listings on the market. And guess what? It's been stuck between 75 and 76 since Friday. I keep thinking we're going to possibly get up to 8,000. Hasn't happened. So we're at 7,600 Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and today. We had 3,991 listings um, come up the past seven days with 3,637 going under contract. That's a difference of 354 and 1,914 price changes. So that's price reductions. People saying, oops, I started up a little too high. I better roll this price back. But here's our seven day moving average. It's showing you that the uh, homes under contract starting to slide just a little bit here. Not major, maybe 20, 30, 40 homes, something like that. And then uh, inventory is, is, is gapping it by about 350. So um, nothing really new there, um, you know, more of the same. Uh, if we look at price changes, that is a change. So look at this. This is uh, 1,063 here, it says on September 19th. You go back here to uh, October 18, look at this, 2494. See this line right here? This is when uh, the Fed chairman decided that the economy was too hot and he needed to raise interest rates. This is what we mean by a taper tantrum. So it, uh, it climbed up. So uh, we're not seeing that now, but we are seeing price reductions, price changes coming up, price reductions simply because people have priced a little too hot going into this market. So how do you know what's going on in the real estate market? Now, I've got data. Um, I've got the Cromford Report, uh, which is what I just showed you there. I've got the MLS. Even the MLS uh, kind of lags a little bit. If I were to look at some reports now, it would probably show me June or July. Uh, it doesn't really show anything that's real current. Uh, the Cromford Report does. I have to pay for that service, so I like that. It gives me the data that I need to understand the market. Um, but you don't have access to that. I mean, you could, but why would you want to pay for the Cromford Report if you're not a real estate agent? So, so here's, I've provided some links down below. I hope I have. I'll go back in and, and check and make sure that I have that information in here. Uh, but uh, some links on where to go. And one of the ones that I like to kind of take a peek at is Redfin. And if you look at here, it says Phoenix Housing Market Trends. And you can put in whatever city you want. And it's got trends, demand, recent sales, agent insights. So it shows you here, um, this is the uh, median sales price. Is it the median or is it, the, yeah, the median sales price. Now, there's a difference between median sales price and average sales price. The median sales price just says it takes the uh, number of houses that are listed and you've got the high price and the low price well what's in the middle so the median sales price is 392 right now the average sales price would be the average price of a home that's sold not the median hope that's not confusing how hot is the phoenix housing market 72 very competitive so they're letting you know right there that it's competitive sales to list price 101.4 percent of homes are going above their list price 52.1 percent this is a key number for you if you're thinking of buying or selling homes with price drops 13.1 percent plus 24 percent over a year ago so there's a nice chart nice uh information on redfin they are really known for their data um and then you get down to Agent Insights. That one gets kind of interesting. Uh, this one says, hey, I got a winning offer. This one says, offer not accepted, sold for 500,000. Um, you can't glean a lot from that. It's just a couple agents saying things. Then I like to go to Realtor.com. Realtor.com's got some interesting articles. I don't care about the celebrity uh, news. I don't want to know what Brad Pitt's buying or selling. Uh, but 
This article here says that, uh, and it looks like it's taken just a moment to load, but the era of sub 3% mortgage rates may be behind us. Fed's policy shift could have major repercussions for home buyers. So you can cruise around this site and get all kinds of news. Um, and then there is the National Association of Realtors right here. And this has research, research and statistics, market behavior, housing statistics. Uh, you can get very wonky and drive yourself crazy on this one. So there are a lot of, uh, uh, there's three data sources right there where you can look. And the reason I bring this up was I was talking to a lady just the other day and somehow we got to talking about real estate. And she said, well, I was told that prices are gonna go down next year. Uh, okay, well, they, they might. And uh, I asked her why she thought that. She goes, well, I was just talking to a friend. And we tend to do more planning when we go on vacation than we do purchasing a house. And so how confident is she that prices are going to go down next year? And what is it that she's seeing that says prices are going down next year? Nothing. And I ran into a lot of family uh, when, I, when I was on my vacation. Same, same thing. Well, I heard. Well, I've been told. And... I think in your local market, you need to do a little deep dive, a little digging and find out exactly what's going on so that you are very confident when you want to purchase your home or you want to sell your home on what's going on. If you're sitting back and waiting to buy a home next year with the hopes that prices are going down, that's a good move if you've seen some move in that direction where prices are looking like they're going to go down. If you're just relying that, well, Somebody told me that prices might go down. That's probably not a good move. Now, another thing I like to look at too, and this link will be in there down below, is uh, Mortgage News Daily. And they have a lot of articles here. New home sales recovery continued in August. Um, there's a lot of different articles that you can link on here. And I also like the mortgage rate tab here for the current mortgage rates. So you can see that today, 3.13, yesterday, 3.10, that would be Friday. So now you know where interest rates are headed instead of guessing. Now, a little caution here on interest rates. When you see that 3.13, that doesn't mean that every lender you go to is going to be 3.13 because rates all depend on your personal situation. What's your credit? What's your debt to income ratio? How much down payment are you putting down? So that I like to use as a general gauge. They were three, they're 3.13 now, they were 3.10. So that's telling you that they're creeping up a little bit. So at least you know where rates are headed. And then you can get a hold of your lender and say, well, what kind of rate are we looking for today? And, uh, um, but you have a sense on your own of the general direction. Too many people just call a bunch of different lenders. They call Quicken, they call Wells Fargo, they call their credit union. What is your rate? Well, you're gonna get a different number every time you get a hold of somebody. What is your rate? Depends. So you see me talking with Pat on Fridays and we joke about that all the time. Pat, what's your rate? Depends on what lender you're using, depends on what program, how many points you're paying, what your credit score is. So there isn't just a rate, but if you go to this website, you can see where rates are trending and that's important. I have a comment here that says, if prices go down because interest rates went up, you're still paying the same amount, if not more, over the length of your mortgage, right? Absolutely, Steve. Um, you know, if, if, if interest rates go up and prices go down, it's kind of a wash with your, with your payment. I think the thing to really keep in mind is if you're thinking of buying, how long are you planning on staying in that house? Somebody asked a question the other day and said they, they wanted to buy a condo, but they only wanted to stay in there two years and they wanted to put it up for rent. Um, I don't think that's a very good plan for two main reasons. One, two years is too short to recoup your costs because you've got closing costs uh, when you go to sell the, sell the place. He wants to rent it. Well, in a condominium, um, you when the day you purchased it, you may be able to rent it out, but two years from now, they may have a cap on how many units can actually be rented out. You know, they want to keep owner occupancy at a certain rate so they can be FHA and VA qualified, uh, warrantable condo unit. And you might two years from now say, well, I'm going to put it up for rent and find out you can't. And then you're going to have to sell it and it may not have gone up and accelerated in price enough for you to get rid of it. Um, and that can be a problem. And I had that happen back in the 80s from personal experience. Uh, the real estate market turned on us back in, let's see, I think I bought that in 80, 
1980 and I was trying to sell it in 83 and I couldn't because I was upside down. Uh, prices had not accelerated, but my grand plan was I was going to buy it. I was going to sell it in two years, get that huge down payment from the profit of that place and buy a house. Didn't work. I did eventually buy a house, but uh, I got stuck in that condo. So if you're planning on buying, uh, you should have a plan to stay there at least five years. The other unknown too is whether or not you want to turn it into an Airbnb. And that's very profitable right now for a lot of people and it's working great. But now not only have, do you have to be uh, knowledgeable on the real estate side of things, but you have to be a tourism expert. And it's hard to tell where that's going to go. Some cities are actually starting to tack a lot of fees on uh, on Airbnbs, different, st different uh, taxes. Uh, there's an entry fee and an exit fee and there. They can't really regulate them, but they can try to slow down the growth of Airbnbs by taxing them. I know it's a major problem in San Diego down by the beach. Everybody's got an Airbnb and some of the neighbors just don't like it. So get in there and become an expert on your market and so that you know what's going on so that you can make an informed decision so that you don't have to depend on Uncle Joe to tell you what he thinks is going on in the real estate market. So we'll be back tomorrow doing another deep dive because I'm going to tell you what's going on in the real estate market today with current numbers and tomorrow. Until then, have a great Monday. Thank you.